Real people came to church. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, very quickly, and then we'll do Matthew Acts chapter 3, verse 20 to 12 to 16. I'm sorry if you have stood a lot, but we honor God's word in this house by just rising. Can you please rise on your feet and let's just honor God's word together, and then you are able to sit down. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, the Bible says this was the word of Christ. Um, I mean, that's the model prayer, or what you call our Lord's prayer. And I just want to emphasize verse 13. Here, the Bible says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. If you have a Bible yourself, you're reading, you might want to underline that. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 16. Are you there? Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 16. The Bible says, and I love this. So when Peter saw it, now let, let's start from verse 11 for proper perspective. Now as a layman who was healed, so you know there was a man who was healed, held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? It's not us. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the only one and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the prince of life who come raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And verse 16 says, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all. For a few minutes this morning, I want to share with you what I tied to the purpose of supernatural power. The purpose of supernatural power. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word will give light, give understanding unto us as simple people. Father, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue depend on the very writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we prayed. In Jesus' name, we prayed. Amen. Amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. The purpose of supernatural power. We must start our conversation today with what I call, what the church, not only me, what the church, I've come to call doxology. Have you, uh, were you alive when we used to write letters um, to a secondary school? And you are writing letters to people you love. Uh, and then you greet them and say, I've been thinking about you. Uh, and um, last weekend I could not sleep. And I hope that you are fine and all things are. If so, doxology. And <laughs> Gen Z will know what we are talking about. But millennials will know that if so, doxology. What is doxology? It's a word of praise to God in biblical times. It's a word of praise to God. And, and the verse of scripture we started with, Matthew chapter 6, the disciples had gone to the Christ and had asked him how they ought to pray. They saw something different about the prayer life of Jesus, and, and they wanted that for themselves. I mean, that is one of the ways you learn. When you see somebody doing something, and you see that it's different from what you are doing, and you see that they are getting results, uh, then it is important you ask them. In 2024, you must ask questions. Uh, why? Because we grow in the direction of our questioning. Uh, therefore, if I ask a question, I will get answer. So the disciples ask him, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples to pray. And then the Bible told us of what you today call our Lord's Prayer. That was the model prayer that Jesus taught his people. And in the Lord's Prayer, we cease from asking to praise him. Uh, it is praise that bursts out from his soul that is overflowing with gratitude to God. It's not just something you do uh, because you have to do it. But uh, that's which overflows from the soul. You see, the Lord Jesus has been teaching us how to pray. And if you started by reading that book, The, um, the Lord's Prayer, the first thing the Lord wanted us to concentrate on is on the greatness of God. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He spoke about the greatness, the vastness, and the holiness of our God. That tells you that no matter how what you are facing, it is not you that is facing it. If God will face it for you, then you will overcome. Why? Because your God is great. 
your God is awesome. And having spoken about that, it led us to several areas on how to ask and which way to ask. But having said that, Jesus says something uh, that is very important. Then he led us to step and conclude our prayers by looking at the greatness of our Father in the expression of praise. And he said in verse 13, he said, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And this is very important. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 11. Let's read First Chronicles 29 and then verse 11. Uh, because what you see um, in Matthew 6, 13, um, you will see something very similar. First Chronicles chapter 2 and then verse 11. First Chronicles 29 and then verse 11. Look at this. The Bible says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. So it seems to you that Jesus was even quoting this scripture. See, yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and heart is yours. I'm not interested in speaking about the majesty and the glory. I just want to zero in on something today, which is the power. Jesus said God possesses the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And he told us how long he possesses that. He said forever. So God is not in power for now. Like you vote people in power for now. I mean, if you are the president of Nigeria, like Bubu was the president for a while. Right now, his phone does not ring. I was reading the story of uh, uh, Ruben Abati was sharing uh, about how he was the chief press secretary to the former president, Jonathan. And he said that immediately um, they declared that Buhari was in power. He had to check his phone for, for like a day. The phone was not ringing. He had to check his phone. Was he on? He said he would go back and check it because the phone was unusually quiet. I mean, for four years, for five years, he was always on the call. People were always reaching him, sending him a text message. He then discovered that people who hang around him have moved to start hanging around the new president. Now, God is not a president we vote in. So there are no angers on now that will not be there tomorrow. Unlike the people of, of the world, God is not somebody people move on from. Because he's in power, scripture says, forever. So there is no question of who the power is. Who has the power? The Bible says, for yours, O God, is the glory, the power, and the kingdom. So who has the power? God. Forever. God. The ultimate power is not of the devil. The ultimate power is not of man. Ultimate power is of God. Is of God. However, by God, you can manifest and walk in God's power. It is why it is called the power of God. There is no man of God that is powerful in himself. Can I say that to you? There is no man of God that is powerful in himself. First thing they could be able to do is that they have learned how to walk in God's power. Or they have stayed with God so that now they are endued with the power. But without the power of God, every man of God is ordinary. It tells you that what makes a difference in every life is the power that comes upon the life. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? It is the power of God that makes a difference. It is not your power. It is God's power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when we come to the end of the year like this, your body tells you it's time to rest. So you might even be in service today and you're just lethargic and all of that. You've got to kick yourself in and say, listen, um, I, I want to be equipped. I want to be equipped for life and for destiny. Right rider. And it's not that, and you have to understand that. And that's like what Peter also said. Uh, when they began to look at them, like miracle workers, when they began to look at them as if it was by their own power that they were able to heal a man who was born lame, they were looking at them like, you guys are powerful. Peter says something very important in Acts chapter 3 verse 12. He said, why do you look at us as if by our own power we have done these things? He made them understand that it was the Christ. It was the power of the Christ that made this man whole. We can't do anything. Yes, we stayed with the Christ. Yes, we understand his doctrine. 
But without the empowerment of the Christ, we can never have been able to do this. Listen, dear friends, and that's where many of us get it wrong. You can never by your own self do anything. Listen, when somebody says, I do not feel powerful, feeling has got nothing to do with this. Listen, when I ask you in the year 2024 to lay hands on the sick, you do not have to feel a, a fire energy coming through. You just have to do it in the name of Jesus. Because power is released when a man can stay with God, a man can receive power. It is the idea of staying or being endued with power is from God. It is not from you. So someone did a crusade and somebody started walking. See, that man of God is very powerful. Liar. It is the God that is powerful. Every act of miracle tells us about the God behind the miracle. It doesn't tell us about the man. Because without God, that man of God will spit and do everything and nothing will happen. That's why it is called the power of God, not the power of man. When the power of the Lord comes into any place, it can heal. It can deliver. It can set free. The miraculous can happen. But the power is not the power of the ransom now. It's not the power of the church. It's not the power of PFA. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. And there are scriptures that shows clearly that God has given us his power. You see, the idea is that you cannot have a thing until I give it to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Have you ever received a gift from somebody before? And then the person now starts saying, ah, that's not how to use it though. That's not how to. Now, when you give a gift and you are a normal guy, you know there are abnormal people, and you are a normal guy, <laughs> you should actually leave the gift and let the people who, re person who receive the gift use the gift however he wants to use it. Do you understand that? What we call the power of God means that for you to function in it, God must have released that power to you. What we call the power of God means that for you to actually move in the supernatural, the super of God must have been released upon you. Therefore, you can prophesy now. And somebody come prophesy, man of God, and you say, I can't prophesy because the spirit doesn't come upon you. Why? Because it takes the endowment of the spirit for you to be able to prophesy. When any man says, I can do it anytime. That's Christ speaking. You can't do it anytime. You can only do it when it comes upon you. Why? Because it is the power of the Spirit that ensures that we can do things. The Bible says, and I want to show you that God has given that power to us. It's not that he will give us. It's that he has given us that power. Do you know what I'm saying? What did I say? Speak like you are alive. Speak like you believe it. Personalize it. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. The Bible says Jesus gave them power to cast out devils. He gave them power. That word there is not the word power. It's actually the word exousia. Which means that he gave them authority. That's what it is. He said, behold I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. He said, behold. That word behold is the word see. I give you authority. Is he saying I will give you? I give you. That means it is not a word that is promised. It is a word that is a reality. It has happened already. God give you this power. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says we have this treasure in 18 verse. That the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. So God is the one who has the power, not you. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Oh, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything that has been of ourselves. Second John chapter 3 verse 5. He said, but our sufficiency is of God. Who has made us able? That word able there is the word ability. Is the word power. Who has made us able? Ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter because the letter killed, but the Spirit gives life. It gives life. Ephesians chapter 1 and then you read verse 19. The Bible says that we may know the exceedingly greatness of his power towards us who believe. The exceeding greatness. Of his power. It is the power of God. When I pray for somebody, how is it that the person can be healed? It is because I am releasing his power. Oh, the same hand that I used to roll pandered here, I laid on you and you receive healing. It tells you that the exceedingly greatness of his power is what I impart upon you. When I pray. 
It's not my power. It is power. Is someone listening to what I'm saying? So, somebody said, well, I, I, I can't do it. No, you can. It's not you. Not that you can, but him. Not that you are sufficient of yourself to think of anything as being of yourself. For your sufficiency is of God. That's what it means to be supernatural. You are not thinking of your ability. You are thinking of the ability of him that is on the inside. The ability of him that is on the inside. Ephesians 3 verse 20. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that you think or even imagine, according to the power, the dunamis, that is at work within me. Glory to God. If that gets you, it excites you. According to the power that is at work within me. So I say, will you pass that exam? There is a power at work in me. Are you beautiful? There is a work of power at work in me. There is a power at work in me. I, I need you to deliver that project. There is a power at work in me. Can you close this deal? Do you never say no. Because there is a power at work in you. Do you have an ability to perform that financial deal? There is a power at work in me. I need you to lead a group of people for an assignment. Can you do it? There is a power at work in me. It's not me. It's the exceedingly greatness of his power. The Bible uses that adjective to describe the expressions of the power of God. Exceedingly greatness of his power. Those of us who believe. The Bible says in C10 of Ephesians, it speaks about the mightiness of his power. The mightiness of his power. The Bible says we are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. Give me Colossians chapter 1 verse 29. Colossians chapter 1 verse 29. The Bible says to this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Listen, believers do not understand this truth. We need to come to the reality of what the New Testament speaks and preaches about. There is a mightiness of a walking in you. Somebody say, I can't break away from addiction. There is a mightiness of the walking of God in you. The only thing that should hold you bound is what can hold God bound. The only pattern that should be successful in your family is the pattern that can hold Jesus bound. If you cannot chain him down, it shouldn't chain you down. Someone say, but why am I not seeing a change? Because you are not living according to the workings of his mighty power. You are depending on your ideals, your virtues. You are not depending on the expressions of that glorious power in your life. Say it's not possible. Yes, I believe so. Humanly speaking, it is not. But grace speaking, it is. Grace speaking, it is. 2024 is the year of grace speakings. Grace speakings. It will speak concerning you. It will speak in your life. Somebody say, but, but your designs, your creativity, I, I can tell. It's, I can tell this is you. In 2024, they won't be able to tell. Because a new dimension is coming upon you. In 2024, a new you is imagined. Oh, that's how you used to be. No, even your dressing will change. I was telling somebody, I said, this year you have to change the way you are dressing. Let it be uncommon. Let it be uncommon. You, you see, it is not, you can dress flashy. It doesn't mean you go to air. You can. Not every time black and brown, black and brown, black and brown. Yeah, not every time. Wear sky blue. Let them see you are the one coming. Let them see. Why wear light colors? Expression of his power. Say, I, I don't want to be noticed. You have to be noticed this year. Because the supernatural makes you noticeable. When the supernatural happens, you will be known. Men will see you. You see, when you are the best in your class, you don't say, I don't want to be noticed. The lecturer will tell about you. Your result will show. I don't want to be noticed. I mean, there are people who are very brilliant in school. And they didn't want to be noticed. But after 100 and 200 level, we all notice them. We know our levels. <laughs> we know us. Amen. We know us. Like holy pride. We know us. <laughs> you see, when you know these truths, you want to be counted. Somebody say, you know, there are five steps in my company. And only a few people get to manager. Or get to deputy manager or just executive director. 
begin to think that those people don't have seven heads. If they are in the court, I announce to you that you are in a greater court today. You partake of an higher table. If a power backs them up, the power that backs you up does not only back you up, it lives inside of you. The only impossibility you have is an impossibility of your mind. The moment you can deliver yourself from that level of ignorance, your access knowledge that no man can stop you anymore. In 2024, you are unstoppable because you carry God. And you see, a man can carry God, but a man can live differently. I remember when I found out that I have the temple of the Lord. I don't mean I read it in the Bible. I found out. That means I found it. I found it. You know when the man Archimedes found the Archimedes principle, he ran out. He said, I found it. You wreck, I found it. When I found it, when you can't find it until it is revealed by the Spirit. When I found it, I traveled home. I, when I entered our house, <laughs> I said, God has come. You don't have to look anywhere. Where is God? I have come. I brought him. God has come. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Temple means he lives inside of that temple. So you can't divide me and him. When I come, he comes. Glory be to God. He comes. I have come. What are you looking for? I have come. You can't have an accident. Temple can't be in a car and have an accident. It can't, God can't be here. You see, it is the understanding that shifts everything. Do you get what I'm saying with you? One of the main Greek words that is translated power in the New Testament is in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Bible says, and you shall receive power. That word power there is the word dunamis. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The word dunamis refers to miraculous power. It refers to ability, strength, and might. Listen, dear friends, anybody that teaches you Christianity without power is lying to you. Read the New Testament. Read the scriptures. Read this book and you will find out that every page of this book is covered with the miraculous. In fact, in the New Testament, it is an aberration to talk about the gospel without power. It goes together. It goes together. Casting out devils, healing the sick, working in the miraculous is a sign of the supernatural. It's a sign of the gospel. What is power? What is dynamics? It means strength. It means might. And I love this one. It means power in action. You know you can have power and that power will not be in action. They can take, let me explain that to you very quickly. You can have potential power and you will not use it. For instance, um, you all live in Nigeria and it's normal for them to take power, right? And then you have a power cut and then they take it. Or what you say, they take light. <laughs> I think you understand that better, voice. they take power, they didn't take light. But let's just say they take light so that you can get it, all right? So they take light. <laughs> it sounds very funny when you say it like that. So, but you have a generator. You know, that is a potential, it has a potential to supply that power. But you can decide I'm not going to hone it. And, because I don't really need it. So you leave it. And your house at that particular moment has no supply of power. It doesn't mean you do not have a thing that can supply power. But you can still live without power. That's why I like dynamics. Dynamics is power in action. It is not power that resides and in potential state. It is power that is kinetic. Power that is at work already. Power that is activated. Power that is in use. Power that is exercised. That is the kind of power you must work in in 2024. The kind of power that the devil cannot stay on you. The kind of power that makes financial prosperity possible. The kind of power that makes you spiritually energized. I'm tired of dull Christians. I'm tired of believers who can't win souls. The kind of power that lay hands on the sick. The kind of power that does not begin to be a doctor when you have not been trained. Somebody say, I have a headache. You say, when last did you treat malaria? What's your problem? You are a child of God. You should say, come, can we pray together? Somebody say, but what if he's not healed? That's the reason they are not healed. You walk by faith and not by sight. It is not you that heals the person. But the moment you pray, there is a release of the supernatural. Somebody say, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The work of the church is to lay hands on the sick. The work of God is to make them recover. 
Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? It talks about the power of God, dynamics. It's explosive power to perform miracles. It's supernatural aptitude. I love the word aptitude because it talks about natural ability to do something. Can I say to you that God's aptitude is natural ability is the supernatural. God's innate nature is to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. As it is natural for some of you here to eat pandedian, is here. It's, 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 hey, to just eat pandedian, it's natural for God to perform signs and wonders. It doesn't have to be, be in shape. You know, sometimes we pray, and we do that for like 10 hours. Then we say, God cannot do miracles now. What you did was you built up your own faith. It had nothing to do with the God. God's power is always active and ready to work. You may need to do that so that your own faith can be built up. Because the Bible says in Jude chapter 1 verse 20, build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So you have to exercise yourself unto godliness so that you can believe God for the apportioning of his power and the expression of his graces upon people. But it doesn't mean that it's that prayer that makes God's grace available. God's grace is always available. That prayer only made it applicable. Somebody listen to me. The expression of his power. Do not miss. His natural ability is to do signs and wonders. Therefore, when you saw the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you saw Jesus walking, he's always doing signs and wonders. He, he didn't have to stop. Let us pray so that there will be signs and wonders. He continued. Continued. Continued doing signs and wonders. I believe sincerely that somebody in this auditorium, in fact, not somebody, Many of us will come with testimony. So, the way we use share testimony here, we begin to share testimony. You know, my, my cousin was sick. I, I just prayed for her, uh, and that's it. Somebody was sleeping, and I prayed, and that was it. And she got healed. That is the level the Lord is taking us to. Not to the be blessed, but being a blessing to other people. Somebody believe that. Somebody believe that. You believe that? Say, believe in Hallelujah. Today, I've been seeing that the Lord has granted us power. I've showed you that. That God has granted us power. The question is, why did he grant us this power? For because of the supernatural, natural men can do great things. Why? Why? Mortal men are able to heal. <laughs> Mortal men are able to perform signs and wonders. I don't know whether you have been, whether that has really impressed you before. But I, in my work with God, I've, I've attended conferences and God's power has so moved. And I get home. And I, I still want to eat. I get home, I'm tired. I thought I was able to do all of that. But I get home and I'm weak. The question is, how is it that such a man as I is able to do that? Because a supernatural power came upon me. The question is, why would the Lord allow supernatural power to come upon the earth? Why? Because you see, if we do not understand the purpose of a thing, we will not actively seek for it. I found out that believers do not understand the why they need power and why they need to work in the supernatural so they are not tasked. They are not hungry for the supernatural. Next week, I'm going to teach you on releasing the supernatural. Releasing the supernatural. Releasing the supernatural. But you see, you first of all must understand why. Why? 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 <laughs> why will God do that? I'll just, I'll tell you. You see, God knows that we cannot live the fullness of the life he expects of us without that power. Little one that Jesus warned them in the 24, 49 of the book of Luke. He said, tarry in Jerusalem till you'll be endued with power from on high. Tarry. Don't go anywhere. Zeal can want to push you, but don't go anywhere until there be an endowment from on high. He understood that it would take the miraculous to fulfill kingdom assignments. It would take the miraculous. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We're against principalities and powers. Spiritual wickedness. Rulers of darkness in heavenly places to displace those things. You will need power. Somebody says, Yoruba says, Okwe Malagidi, 
Meaning that just or evil just does not work against somebody who is stubborn. Uh, they are lying. Because in his stubbornness, he will be wretched. Spiritual fight is fought with spirituals. You don't fight spirituals with emotions. Crying does not solve the problem when you are fighting against witches and wizards. Is somebody following me? Let nobody tell you that Christianity came to Nigeria and they just came to life for us. If you have grandfathers or great grannies, they will tell you stories and you will know how wicked the world was. Is. I mean, I was home. My mom was still sharing with us how somebody was giving back to children and they were dying consistently. Dying! Because somebody will just say, you will not give birth in this house. I think some of us need to take tutorials from old people. Then you will know that you need power. You, you, some of us blame our parents for being lazy. They were not lazy. The forces they were fighting with was great. That you are alive is a testimony that they were fighters. They may not be very prosperous, but they kept you. Listen, you need power. And I want to quickly share with you the purpose of supernatural power. I want you to leave this place with a task for significance, a task for greatness, a task for possibility. That if you don't do anything in 2024, you will pray. And I found out that prayer is not the answer to supernatural power. It is task and hunger. It is hunger that we will push you to pray. It is hunger that will push you to study the word. It is hunger that will push you to stay in God's presence. If you don't desire it enough, you won't love it. That's the supernatural. If you don't desire it enough, you won't walk in it. Desire. And the first purpose of supernatural power is the formation and edification of godly character. The formation and edification of godly character. Character cannot be sufficiently changed on the basis of personal ideals, concepts, philosophies, disciplines, rules, and norms. To effect true change in character, we need God's miraculous power. Somebody says, I'm born again. Have you met people who have been born again for donkey years? And they are still as angry as Apana. Still as angry as Amadioa. They, they, they are born again. They've been born again for years. But it takes the power of the spirit to remove anger. To deal with that anger. It takes the power of the spirit. Somebody said that's how we are angry in our family. People talk about patterns that are wicked. Patterns that should not be called amongst believers. You will hear people say, you know, in our family we don't normally just one man does not satisfy us. One man does not satisfy us. No. Uh, I mean, if you look at my sister, my, my, my great granny, and they begin to talk about it like we pride. We get patterns that takes the power of the supernatural to break it from you. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible says God is he who works in you. See what I said before? The workings of God. God is he who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It means that it is the workings of God in the believer that cuts the believer away from everything immoral. From everything that is not of God. 413 Philippians, Paul went further and said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can live the spiritual life. I can live the righteous life through the strengthening of God. That word strength there talks about the power of God. Sometimes it takes the power of God to break the chain of addictions. Some of people, I, I, I've met with people mm, fighting with masturbation. And, and you would you read ideals, disciplines, you even tell them not to go online, change their phones, and they keep doing it. But an encounter with Yahweh, they just stop it. An encounter with God. And a man was born again, prayed in tongues, was still addicted to, to cigarettes. Addicted. In the morning, psh, Afternoon, evening, he's just smoking. Keeps smoking. One day, he came. What's going on? A man of God lay hands on him. The next time he went out of that meeting, took cigarettes, and the whole thing was bitter. 
He was looking at this thing. He said, well, maybe they are poisoning it. Went to buy another pack. Again, he said, no, they are poisoning it. He changed it from St. Maurice to... I changed it again. Small. Still the same. That was the last day he ever smoked. What did it? The power of God. I've seen sexual addicts. I'm not talking about I have sex once in seven months. Sexual addict. Who can't go without sex in two days? Sexual addict. With nine abortions. Stop having sex altogether. Because they came to the power of God. There is nothing that can break addiction like the power of God. And we live in a time and in a generation that people are addicted to things. We call ourselves free, but we are still in bondage to things that generations before us were never in bondage to. We need power. We need God's power. The greatest lack of a generation is the power of God. Not ideas, not knowledge, because knowledge has abound. Knowledge abounds everywhere. What will break you free is the power of God. Allow me to say to you, your colleagues, your friends are addicted. They are chained. What they need is not you speaking to them and encouraging them. What they need is an encounter with the power of God. An encounter with the power of God. You can't hug people out of addiction. What is it they do now? You can't do therapy out of an addiction. In fact, what therapy does is to make them accept themselves as they are. Oh, there's nothing wrong with pornography. You are telling a believer there's nothing wrong with pornography. You don't have to tell her. Something in her heart keeps telling her something is wrong after she finishes watching it. I'm not the one preaching guilt conscience. No, it's a spirit. It's a new person. All that's gone. Therefore, everything that reminds her or him of the nature of the old is repudiated by the spirit man. <laughs> the nature of the spirit began to manifest in the believer. Give me Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. The Bible says, but the fruit of the spirit. Somebody say, but the fruit of the spirit. Read it to me. Number one. Joy. When you, you see, you see this, this fruit of the spirit, when you call it, there is something that even sweetens your heart. It makes you calm. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He said against such there is no law. If you find a man who manifests this fruit of the spirit, marry him. Don't even ask, is the will of God? <laughs> will of God don't come clearer than this. Will of God does not come clearer than this. This is the will of God. He never passed this way. Say, by man of God, PFA said, no. He has nine. This nine is completing a man. Don't ask PFA or anything. Just marry the guy. Because no one can demonstrate the fruit of spirit and have a problem in marriage. Your parents did not know God. They are married. You that had God, your marriages are breaking in a generation that is, God told me, two weeks after marriage, they, can, they don't speak to each other again. There was one couple we married together. They say, I, I was a pastor. They say, pastor say, come and sign. I said, me, sign. I know it will not last. This one, we joined them. You know, there are joinings together. Tie your hook. When you start hearing hook, you know that there's a problem. It was hooking. They hook each other up. The guy that drove them from a town to another town said they fought from for 200 kilometers. They fought. I mean, after the wedding. They fought. There's no sweetness. They, it was bitterness all through. Today, there's no marriage. In fact, the, the lady is remarried. No, no, no. There's no pity there. No, no, no. Look, the Bible is true. Marry a man without lost suffering. Your marriage will not work. Because it takes long suffering to survive in marriage. Any woman that tells you if it does not work, I will get out and go and marry somebody. Don't marry the person. Run. Run. There's no, yes, marriage is we do life together. That's what it means. No, we do life together if it pleases me. That's one of the major problems I have with feminists. Glory be to God. But it is not someone for men. Let's just go. <laughs> Gentleness, self-control, kindness. Against such. The Bible said there is no law. No law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. Sometimes I'll tell you about crucifying the flesh and, and having dominion over sin. Because some of you still have small, small sins. Small, small. Small, small sins. 
Sins like, like Agbadu, small, small sin. You see, if we live in the spirit, verse 25, he said, let us also walk in the spirit. It means that those who walk in the flesh, they cannot live in the spirit. Uh, I don't want to mention names. They say I should stop mentioning names. But your playlist cannot be dominated by certain people. I, 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 they can mention it. But, but as I said it, it comes up in your heart. That, that's the good thing about not mentioning names. You see, those people, you can't have those things dominate your playlist and you want to vibe in the spirit. You can't vibe in the spirit. That's why you come to church and you say, you know, the worship is so boring. It's not boring. We can't sing the kind of song you are tuned to. We can't. See, it's not our fault. It's you. The problem is your taste. Your taste board, that's is you. You can't. You see, the supernatural life is different to the carnal life. A Sakikos cannot live in the supernatural. Oh, somebody doesn't know what Sakikos means. When they would... You see, man, they didn't come for the surgeons. If you don't come for such a service as resurgence, you must have listened to the message if you are a serious believer. You see, that's what we are talking about. You see, that's what we are talking about. Now, if you are in the spirit, let me say something to you right now. The, the supernatural power of God will replace strife with gentleness. Supernatural power of God will replace anger with patience. We replace bitterness with love. Selfishness with meekness. Instability and disloyalty with faithfulness. Frugality. Ahu with generosity. Despair, hopelessness, depression with joy. It will replace wickedness with peace. With peace. That must be your heart desire in 2024. That's why I put it on there. And normally I will not show But that, you should snap that. That should be your desire in 2024. That's the proof of your growth. That's a proof of your maturity. That's a proof that you are growing in Christ. That's a proof. If after this whole experience of learning in church and all of that, you are still an angry demon. Something is wrong. You are still stingy. You are like the horse in National Theater. Your hand is never open like this. See, how do you give? God told me to give before I give. Can't you see needs? A believer's response is to need, not to emotions. He's not crying. That's why I didn't give him. You must become faithful, not unstable. You are in love with Tola today. Tomorrow you are in love with Tayo. Tomorrow is Igbo boy, Undukwe. From that one you have now, in fact, you have now fallen in love with Abaka. Instability. He tells me you do not have the flow of And that's why you need the power of God. A generation that is so unstable needs the power of God. A generation that doesn't walk, doesn't know what the fruit of the Spirit means, needs the power of God. Because it is this power that works in you to generate the fruit of the Spirit. Somebody listening to me. This is growth. This is what the Lord expects from you. And then number two, development of an effective prayer life. What is the purpose of spiritual power? Effectiveness. An effective prayer life. You see, we can keep teaching on prayers. But until the people are in deal with power from on high, nothing happens in their prayer lives. Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. But in this hour of need, Matthew 26 verse 41, they slept. It's not teaching, sir, that makes people pray. It's not. It is an encounter with supernatural power. It is an endowment with the Holy Ghost. It is something that propels you to start praying. See, uh, uh, two minutes, you are looking at the watch. It seems like you are praying for two days. It's lack of power. You need an endowment. You need a baptism in the spirit. So that you stay so much in prayer, you say, ah, I don't know where people pray for two hours. I didn't know. When people who are resurgent did not know the time had gone that much. We, we were just in the presence of the Lord. Just there enjoying his presence. Listen, dear friend, you need the power of God to develop an effective prayer life. After the Holy Spirit came, the people who slept prayed. After he came upon them, they prayed. Men become combustible after they have been energized by the foil of the Spirit. 
There is a filing of the spirit that you need. No one can pray effectively and effectually without the endowment of the Holy Ghost. It takes the power of the Spirit to pray, mountain-moving prayers, destiny-imparting prayers, world-changing prayers. It takes the spirits to do that. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Build up yourself on your most holy prayer, praying the Holy Ghost, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. But Spirit helps us in our infirmities with groanings, which cannot be altered. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Bible says, praying with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, Ephesians chapter 6. And then verse 18, John 4, 24, Jesus said, you must pray. You did that worship God, must worship him in spirit. And in truth, sweetheart, in truth, in spirit and in truth. You can't pray without God. It is God who endure you for prayers. If you want to develop a continuous prayer life. You see, and I found out that our generation is a dramatic generation. A very dramatic generation. Let us say we want to do 40 hours of prayer here. People will come. Hey, and we will be sweating. Sometimes the evil gets to the flesh. I'm not against these things. But listen to me. I would rather you do 40 minutes every day for the whole of 2024 than you do 40 hours now and in that week you don't pray anymore. A person who pray consistently and persistently will have better results than you. Because God is more persuaded with persistency and consistency. If fellowship and intimacy is about appearing every day before the throne room. Before the throne room. Before the throne. That's where... He has torn the veil, but we have refused to enter in. If you continue, if you continue, that means that I will have to disarm. Praise God. But you see what, you see what we're talking about here? We must consistently, you see, Spiritual growth is a routine. It's a duty. You must appear every day. You must appear every day. Routine boss me. Somebody says routine boss me. You can never be a spiritual man. What do you mean routine boss you? You live by routine every day. Your whole life is routine. Your whole life essence is routine. Everything you do. There's a time you wake up. There's a way you take your bath. There's a way you take your bath every day. It's routine. There's a way you take your children to school. In fact, your work that they are paying you thousands for is routine. There's a way you must respond to every client. They even teach you what they call internship. is teaching you to, to respond in a certain way. When they come, they approach your table, there's a thing you must say. Good afternoon, welcome. That's all. And you're telling me you hate routine. Medical doctors learn for eight years routine. So that when you say you have a headache, they ask you, is it this part? Is it this part? Is it paining you like this? So that they can tell you. So that no matter the doctor you go to, they will give you the same thing. Routine. When they cannot find, they say go and do tests. Routine. Everybody will tell you to go and do tests. Yeah. When the test comes, they, test, they already know how to read it. Routine. He's not going to check his book to interpret it. Routine. But you don't have spiritual routine. You don't. Because they are not paid for it. That's why you are not growing. There is a day you must appear and there is a time every day in 2024 before God. Not a, I, I, I will try and pray every day. That's not rubbish. You won't do that. Put a time to it. 6 a.m. I will appear before God. Set an alarm. Because you set an alarm to wake up. Set an alarm. Some say, but what if I'm tired? What, what does tiredness have to do with it? Why are you not tired and you still went to work? What if I don't feel like it? Who told you that feelings has anything to do with spiritual things? <laughs> feelings got nothing to do with this. I hope you get what I'm saying. I don't feel like praying. What's my business? I've, I've never felt, felt like praying all my life. Never felt like praying. Never. The only thing I feel like doing is watch movie or eat one day. Because those are physical canal things. You don't need spirit to tell you that. For spiritual things, you've got to do it by discipline. I don't feel like reading my Bible. Who told you somebody have a gift of reading the Bible? Discipline. There is no gift of reading the Bible. There is just a discipline of reading the Bible. Turn up, baby, and read. Turn up and pray. Please, somebody listens to what I'm saying. Is somebody following what I'm saying? 
Number three, why do you need supernatural power? For the fulfillment of ministry and service to God. Serving God effectively is impossible if we depend on our strength to do it. The preaching and teaching of the gospel must be anointed with supernatural power from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, Paul said, My preaching and my words did not come to you in simple wisdom of man. He said, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, he told the Christians at Thessaloniki. He said, listen, guys. He said, our words did not come to you in, in words. He said, but it comes in power. Power. For we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God. Power. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Listen, dear friends, power is a sine qua non in this kingdom. Don't worry, sine qua non just means a required necessity. Before, before you enter university, is a sine qua non you must pass one egg uh, or right jump or do D. It's a sine qua non in this kingdom to have power. Required necessity. There's no other way. Somebody say, God anoint me with power. Yeah, I can see there's no desire. I will stay in my room. Put my hand like this. You are waiting for me to lay hands on you. Put my hand like this. I'm anointed with power by the Spirit. I'm anointed with power. Oh. <laughs> I remember one day I hit myself. I just find out after some minutes that I, I stood up. If I stood up, it means that I was on the floor. Someone said, who lay hands on you? Myself. Desire and hunger. Oh. <laughs> you must desire to change your level. You must desire it. God's power may jump on you unprepared. But it takes proper cultivation and sacred devotion for it to last and remain functional in your life and your ministry. Somebody said, I was just at a meeting and they invited me and then God's power came upon me. For it to last, I told you how that I, it just came upon me. But for it to last, it needed cultivation and devotion. You see, the lack of power is the reason you keep inviting people to church and they don't turn up. Can I tell people who keep sharing flyers in this church that that's the problem? That's the problem. There's no other problem. There's no power. It's lack of power make you teach as those are not saved. Because, listen, you can, by your own words, bring guilty conscience to people. But what drives conviction is the Spirit. Without the Holy Ghost, there's no conviction. The reason many pray and don't get answers is lack of power. The reason you cast out devils and you are tired and the devil is still there is because there's no power. Those who serve God must learn to spend time serving him in private. Listen, dear friends, the Lord told me this. The kingdom is not by eloquence. It is by power. The kingdom is not by eloquence. It's by power. It's not what you can say. It's not the Greek says, the Hebrew says, the Chinese says, the Taiwan says. No, no, that's not it. It's by power. Power. Yoruba song. Bagbara rewomi Ayea Bara la You don't know that one. How many of you understand what that says? Raise your hand. You, you don't know the song, but you understand what it says. Raise your hand. Sometimes I wish I'm in a CSD church. I would have scattered all these things now. You see, there's a, there's a way your mother tongue desires a thing. More than English, a quiet tongue can make you desire it. If I was in my room alone now, this have changed level like this. As they brought that song like this, the level has changed. What that song simply says is that, Lord, clothe me with your power. Because we live in a world of power. The power that the devils cannot overcome. Lord, clothe me with that power. Is that a song? That's not a song. That's a prayer. That's a prayer. You see, those are the kind of songs I, I, we, we, we grew up with. What? 
nonsense is that? Molejo, Lori, Yagolo. And people are sweating. And the devil is laughing. <laughs> you see, we, we have become a people. <laughs> we have become a people who, no, that has an inside joke, so people, some people don't get it. It's, we were in service last week, you understand that. Praise God. So, but, but, but the idea is what will feed people spiritually is what they will become. Is what they become. People should be telling me, oh, that time is going. I didn't know. I just I can teach for four hours. I think by now you believe it. <laughs> yeah. You are not a resurgence that you believe it. I think I, I saw a message in the I preached for two hours, 20 something minutes. And it still felt like I had not said anything to you. Victory over sin. That's number four. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. Give me Romans 6, 12 to 14. Listen, we cannot overcome sin by our own abilities. When we are confronted with impure thoughts, bondage, or addictions, and we try to overcome them by shallow religious practices, we can end up being destroyed by wickedness. Sin was conquered on the cross. Look at that. Therefore, do not let sin. The Bible says, do not let. What did he say? Read that verse for me. Stop. Let me teach you something here. I, I, I come to Desmond's house and I say, Desmond, do not let that dog enter your house. Who has the power to stop the dog? No, listen. Who has the power to stop the dog? Desmond. So what God is saying is that by the reason of being born again, you have a power to stop sin. The idea people have is that I, I, am, I am in captivity to this thing. No, no. It's because there is no workings of power inside of you. Sin is no longer over the believer. He said, he said do not let sin reign. Another time he said, do not let it have dominion over your mortal body that you obey it. He said, and do not present your members. What are your members? Your body. As instrument of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourself to God as being alive from the dead. What is an instrument? An instrument is an unclad female woman. My wife says I should not call it unclad female object again. An unclad female woman <laughs> who is just walking, scantily dressed. Scantily dressed. Say, I am at the beach. I'm at the beach. I'm at the beach. Brother does not think that you are at the beach. What she sees is. An instrument of unrighteousness. Because he sees you now. His body is doing. So, and he's going to take you back home. And as he takes you back home, he starts playing Westlife. <laughs> for the mood. Pay you usher. Asha oh, for the mood. It's all. Sorry, so you know I don't know them, Abby. <laughs> I've messed it up. He start playing this thing for the mood. And then he gets home and says, I'm very thirsty. Can I just, oh no, no, I have what time in my fridge. And in the fridge, you lock each other up. What has happened is that you are the one who presented yourself. The Bible says, do not present yourself as instrument of unrighteousness to sin. It's not the devil that makes believers sin. They are the ones. They say, Is she a shuni? You are a liar. It's not the devil. The devil does not control believers. Say, let no man, when he sins, say it is God. Every man, when they give in to their own lust, or he takes you from the beach to go and watch cinema. Yes, there's a movie, there's a movie, and he won't watch Breath of Life. It won't watch Breath of Life. You know what it will watch. You all know. You know. You know it will watch that thing called Grey. And as you start watching that, you will dance. 
from Odin and say, I didn't know how it happened. How do you not know how it happened? You have people who have been setting the mood from the beach. <laughs> Listen to me. It takes the power of the cross. Look at that. Give me Romans chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. The Bible is clear. It's clear. Do you get it now? It's simple. It's clear. It's clear. It is us. I'm dating you. You see, you can't love a woman. Let me say truth to you now. You can't love a woman and not be physically attracted to her. In fact, if you love somebody and your body does not do somehow, in fact, the closer to the wedding, the more your body should be in problem. Now, if your body does not do that and you are telling me, please don't marry that person. Is single people listening? Are single people listening to what I'm saying? Uh, yes, sir. Now, because you are physically attracted to that person, it means you must be careful of the things you do. Be careful. It is not a place where you now. You see, when you wear those kind of clothes, it eats it. I really love it. Wait till you get married to love it. You can't. What are you loving? Tell her to wear as bad as possible. <laughs> Don't meet at home. No. In fact, the closer to the wedding, the more you should be careful of saying, I alone. Because there are images in your head, what you want to do. And the devil will want you to fast track that doings. Is somebody following what I'm saying? I'm preaching good, right? Now, this is the last sermon of the year. You should hear it. Now, Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 6, it says, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin, that means the old man includes in itself the body of sin, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So that that is my addiction before I knew Christ. It should not be my addiction after I've known Christ. Because that old man has been crucified. Somebody says, just drinking. When you drink, you don't show brain. That's it. You should stop it. Stop it. I told you of when I, when I was not drunk. I've never been drunk in my life. But the lady was telling me, Oti, you know, I'm not drunk. I said I was drunk. It was the next day I knew that. Drinking. I now remember what Solomon said. That wine is a mocker. You see, the way unbelievers look at you, I've, I don't know whether you have seen unbelievers look at you when you say you have not had sex in years. Yeah. Remember when I was in school, I was class rep, I was president, I was the in thing in my department. <laughs> I remember I was, in, <laughs> I was in my lecturer's office one day, and this lecturer was proper Oshoma. I don't know how they put that in English. But he, he carried girls. So he looked at me and said to me, and said to me, Fisai, all this, all this, let me say it in English, but he would not have, Yoba would have made it better for you. Some of you don't understand Yoba, so it's okay. You see, he said, all of these girls are in your hands. You're just using them. Fisai, my fire alone, you're just using them. And I was looking at the idiots, honestly. I was looking at the idiots, because now I can call him an idiot. Because even the certificate, I don't need it. Right? I was looking at him, but what is he saying? Because you see, there is a way unbelievers think. When they see two girls together working with you, you are sleeping with both of them. <laughs> That's what they believe. Is the law. Because they cannot, they cannot, they cannot be friends with you without benefit. They can't. But for us, there was nothing strange because the body of sin has been dealt with. We have overcome. We are no longer in bondage to sin and death. One day I stood in our former church and I announced, if I've ever slept with you, you can stand up. You can stand up. How many pastors can say that? Stand up. In the church. Church really closed down. That will be the end of the ministry. The ability number five. Agent Rush, let me rush now, please. Number five, the ability to achieve great results in a short time. Do you want to achieve great results in a short time? Acceleration. 
then you need power. Acts chapter 14, verse 23. The Bible's book concerning the exploit of the apostles. They, ac they accomplished so much feast. And I believe in a period of about six months, they appointed elders, ministers, and pastors in places. And I, I mean, it took them about three to five years to establish all those churches. <laughs> Something happened in the front century church that we rarely see in the church today. The power of God was manifested for all to see. And it isolated spiritual knowledge. It will keep them for the work of the ministry. When God's power manifests, it produces an atmosphere in which the Holy Spirit is able to transform and deliver those who have been attending church for a long time, even without saying changes. Transformation. It's not how long you've come to church. It's how much power that has come upon your life. And then finally, oh, not finally, sorry, two more. The development of effective witness for Christ. We cannot be witnesses for the Christ. The development of effective witnesses for Christ. We cannot be effective witness for the Christ except we have supernatural power. The most important reason God gave us power is so that we can be witnesses for Christ. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. A witness is someone who has personally experienced something or who has first-hand knowledge concerning a thing and he can corroborate it with facts or evidences. Because of what is so hard. Listen to this. The human mind is capable of generating supernatural evidences. Listen, without evidence, your ministry will not grow. Give me Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. I've come to announce to you that 2024 is the year of supernatural evidences. You know, in this church, if you have friends that are sick, bring them. Bring them on Sunday. Don't even bring them next week. Tell them to come on Sunday. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have people who are sick. They can't sleep well. Depressed. Bring them on Sunday. I'm telling you. Invite them. Put it on the staff. Invite them. Let them come. Supernatural what? Evidences. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Look at that. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Tell me three things he was doing in that scripture. Teaching. Preaching and what? That's the pattern we have. Teaching, preaching, and healing. That's the spiritual pattern. That's the gospel pattern. Evidence must follow. You talk too much, there must be power. You talk too much. You hold the whole crusade, spend the whole money on the conference, on the concert. There must be power. Tell your neighbor and say there must be power. Two, three witnesses. Give me Matthew 6, 35 to 38. Matthew 6, 35 to 38. You see something there again. Look at him and say there must be power. <laughs> Are you there? Matthew 6, 35 to 38. Should I look for it? I should look for it. Praise God. Look at Matthew 6. And then you begin to read from 34. The Bible says, and Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude move with compassion. Because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. What did he begin to do? To teach them. When the day was now fast spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a already, the hour is late, send them away that they may go into the surrounding country, villages, and buy themselves bread. But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread? How many loves do you have? Go and see. And he commanded them to sit down. And in verse 41, and when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and two fish. He divided among them all. Among how many people? Thousands of people. And what Jesus did was teach. And after he taught, what happened afterwards? The miraculous. Let nobody lie to you. The reason why we change the sermons of the gospel is because we do not have power. So we say those days of power are gone. Because we don't have answers. But the days are here. Look at him and say, the days are here. Look at him and say, the days are here. God created us as his image, his representative on the earth. We have the same power there. I remember recently, last year, this year, this year, uh, sometimes this year, I met a guy, my neighbor. I can give him, I can give you his phone number. An evil guy, fantastic guy. 
And I was talking to him about Christ. And I told him, give your life to Jesus. Preach all the sermons I can preach. And the guy will laugh. He said, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm a Catholic. I'm, I'm a believer. And he will laugh. And then one day, I, I looked at him. I, I said, what happened to your job? He said, ah, it's a long story. Um, I was working in an oil company. And um, I just bought a car, a Jeep, in Port Harcourt. And um, one night, I was going home. And arm robber stopped me. And I did not stop him. So I drove away. And they shot me. He said, I didn't know I had been shot. It was after I got to a place, I saw that blood was coming out of my leg. He said, and I touched it. And then after I passed out. And so they took me to the hospital. And then I couldn't walk on the rig anymore. Because something was wrong with my leg. He said, you did not notice. He was asking me, you have not noticed that I limp? I said, I thought he was guy man. He said, no. So he opened the leg and showed me. And he limped like this. So he, he just limped like that. And he said, that's why I stopped working there. He said, that job is still there. Oh. Anytime I can get that job. Oh. I looked at him. I said, but this leg, this is the problem. He said, yes. I said, God can heal this leg. True life story. He said, God can heal this leg. He said, pastor. I said, no, you won't limp again. And there was, you would see the leg, it was like a part of the leg had been cut away. I think the place where the gunshot came through. So you would see it like, like the pain had come inside. And uh, I took him. And to find it was there. And I, there's a room in my house um, where boys sleep. And I took him. I said, come, young man, come. Let's go to the room. I wasn't feeling very spiritual. I just took him to that room. But I know that the Lord said, if you will lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. And that's a miracle. And I lay my hands on him. And I began to pray. And the man fell down, rose up again. He didn't even scatter floor like you think you scatter floor. And then, I think I anointed him with oil or something. I can't even remember. And then, I told him, I said, begin to do what you couldn't do before. And then he jumped. And he said, ah. I can't sense the pain. Normally when I jump like that, I sense pain. I said, jump some more. Jump some more. Jump some more. And he jumped some more. He couldn't feel it. So he says, Pastor, there's something in your house. <laughs> there's something in your house. And then I said, let's walk. So we went out of the house. And then I, I took him by the hand. I think there were some leaders in my house that day. They just didn't know what was going on. So I, I just took him out of the house. And then he started walking. And then we went out of the street. And he said, ah, Pastor, bring your hand. Is there like a ring you used to touch me or something? Now, this is, this, is, this is a Catholic guy that probably does not believe in miraculous like that, like that. And I said, no. He said, ah, pastor. I said, keep walking. Keep walking. And he kept walking. The next day I saw him, I said, how far? He said, I'm going to the gym. <laughs> now, the guy is back in Port Harcourt walking his job back. Now, but that's not the testimony. Two days later, I went to him and I said, let's continue our conversation about Jesus. He gave his life to Christ immediately. Immediately. There was no job in talking. Immediately. I had been talking. You see, you talk too much. That's why. There was no need. I said, I said Pastor, yeah. Today is back on his job. He said, I'll be back in December. I'm waiting for him. Because he has to send money or something. <laughs> but that's a joke. But the truth is, the Lord healed him. I have testimonies upon testimonies. So that when I, I mean, when the mother was traveling, the mother came to me. You see, old people, they really lay down. They lay down. Pastor, pray. Pastor. <laughs> it's because of what they have seen. Without power, a generation will not know God. Witnessing becomes easy. Because power has gone forth. Somebody say, did I, 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 can I also lay hands like that? Yes, you can. The reason you have not seen that is because you have not laid hands. You have not dared God. Had nothing to lose. If he came out and he was still leaping, that's not, it's God that was, God, you see, that's what you said in the scriptures, I did it. No. Had nothing to lose. Become believers who have nothing to lose. Become believers who are desperate for God. 
Listen, you may have been well schooled, well read, well trained, but until you are a deal with power by the Holy Spirit, you still have the greatest lack of all. There is effectual witnessing with the endowment of the spirits. God created us as his image. We are his representative. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, why do we need it? To give glory to God. Via miraculous and restorative work. Our time has gone. We would have read John chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. There was a man that was born blind. And they asked the Lord, why? Jesus said, so that the glory of the Lord. <laughs> he said, for the glory of the Lord to be manifested. Somebody born blind. God did not want him to remain blind. It's the restorative work of God. God wanted to perform a miracle, a restorative work. There are situations in our lives that God is ready to perform restorative work. God has done one. Be in church next Sunday. Verifiable by proof. Medical report. You will see everything. That will tell you that you are in a church that is miraculous. You understand what I'm saying? No matter what, sickness is in your body. A pattern in your family, hope deferred. God is about to show forth in 2024. He's God and God by himself. He's the God of power. He's the God of power. He's going to show forth himself. I've come to announce to somebody, and this is how the Lord wants me to end this. I've come to announce to somebody that a miracle is coming. You didn't hear me. Oh, because I don't shout it. And I didn't say come and bring prophetic offering. God will have me announce to somebody that a miracle is coming. Amen. You are about to break out to signs and wonders. Amen. The miraculous is taking place in your life. Amen. You are launching into the new. Amen. Somebody here is launching into the new. Amen. Somebody here is launching into the new. Amen. New frontiers in your home. Amen. New frontiers in your business. Amen. New frontiers in your finances. Amen. New frontiers in your spirit. Amen. You are launching into the new in the name of Jesus. Amen. God's great grace is alighting upon you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The ordinary sees right now. Amen. You live in the extraordinary. Amen. The natural stops now. You live in the supernatural. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise on your feet one minute. Raise your hand.